SwiftUI gives us a range of functionality to render colors and manages to be both simple and powerful, a difficult combination, but one they really pulled off. To try this out, let's create a Z stack with a single text label. Z stack, text, your content. If you want to put something behind the text, we need to place it above it in the Z stack. But what if we wanted to put some red behind there? How would we do that? One option is to use the background modifier, which can be given a color to draw like this, dot background, color, dot red. That might have done what you expected, but there's a good chance it was a surprise. Only the text view has a background color, even though we've asked the whole Z stack to have it. In fact, there's no difference between that code and this, moving the background modifier to below the text. If you want to fill in red the whole area behind the text, you should place the color into the Z stack. Treat it as a whole view all by itself. So we can remove the background modifier and say instead, just color.red before the text. In fact, color.red is a view in its own right, which is why it can be used like shapes and text. It automatically takes up all the space available, but you can also use the frame modifier to ask for specific sizes. We could say color.red.frame, width 200, height 200. SwiftUI gives us a number of built-in colors to work with, such as color.blue, color.green, and more. We also have some semantic colors, colors that don't say what hue they contain, but instead describe their purpose. For example, color.primary is the default color of text in SwiftUI, and will be either black or white, depending on whether the user's device is running in light mode or dark mode. There's also color.secondary, which is also black or white, depending on the device, but now has slight transparency, so a little bit of the color behind it shines through. If you need something specific, you can create custom colors by passing in values between zero and one for red, green, and blue, like this color red 1, green 0.8, blue 0. Even when taking up the full screen, you'll see that using color.red will leave some space white. How much space is white depends on your device, but on iPhone 10 designs, that's iPhone 10, 10s, and 11, you'll find that both the status bar, that's the clock area at the top, and the home indicator, the horizontal stripe at the bottom, are left uncolored. This space is left intentionally blank because Apple doesn't want important content to get obscured by other UI features or by any rounded corners on your device. So the remaining part, that whole middle space, is called the safe area and you can draw into it freely without worrying that it might be clipped by the notch on an iPhone or something similar. If you want your content to go under the safe area, you can use the edges ignoring safe area modifier to specify which screen edges you want to run up to. For example, we could create a Z stack that fills the screen edge to edge with red, then draw some text on top. We'll have a Z stack, then color.red.edgesignoringsafearea.all, and then text your content. It is critically important that no important content be placed outside the safe area, because it might be hard, if not impossible, for the user to see. Some views, such as list, allow content to scroll outside the safe area, but then add extra insets so the user can scroll things into view. If your content's just decorative, like our background color here, then extending it outside the safe area is okay.